I don't know who filmed this video and where, but I wonder who's winning. A snake or a tortoise? Is everyone losing? We're winning. What's going on here? The first thing I thought was maybe the snake was just stuck. Is that even possible? I mean, it's a snake after all. A creature that's supposed to crawl literally everywhere and has perfect control over its body and all that. But as soon as I started searching, I discovered this is not a unique case. In Middlesex County, Massachusetts, passersby discovered a water snake stuck in a snail shell. The snake was about to have a snack, but underestimated its own size when it stuck its head inside. Most likely, the poor creature would have stayed like that if not for the people who pulled it out. So, a snake stuck in a tortoise shell has a right to keep living. It really got stuck and couldn't get out, although it wriggled intensely. At the same time, the tortoise is still inside. It even moves its paws. Damn. The snake really needs to get out. Perhaps it was going to attack the tortoise, but the holes in the shell were too small. Or listen, maybe it was the tortoise that grabbed the snake and then pulled it inside. No wonder the poor creature's in so much panic and the tortoise is still alive. Turtles actually have quite powerful jaws, which really can hold a snake tight, especially if it's not welcome here. What do you want here? Can't you see the spots taken? Okay, I guess this snake just chose the wrong tactics. It needed to crush the turtle together with the shell. If that was an anaconda, it could probably handle the- What do you mean an anaconda can't crack a turtle's shell? Seemed like the turtle's fate was sealed when a large snake wrapped itself around it. After all, few can resist the power of the anaconda. The snake did its usual thing, that is, it tried to squeeze all the air out of the turtle to eat it later, but the turtle didn't give up. For several minutes it fought for its life, resisted as hard as it could, and then a human came to the rescue. Anyway, another happy end, maybe not for an anaconda who was left hungry. Well, what did it expect when it attacked the turtle? Nature itself has given this animal universal protection from snakes, and not only from snakes. Made of bone and covered with hard plates, the shell prevents many predators from getting to turtle meat. Biting through the shell is incredibly hard, especially when you're a snake and are not physically ready for such a challenge. Especially when the turtle can bite back. Yes, turtles basically bite for self-defense, and in this respect, the alligator snapping turtle is a real berserker. First, it's already quite fierce, and second, this predator is ready to eat any meat, including small alligators. You must be careful around the alligator snapping turtle and consider it potentially dangerous. This species can bite through a broomstick, and on rare occasions, people got their fingers bit off by these turtles. No wonder adult alligator snapping turtles have few natural enemies. Who will even dare to take on this animal? If we talk about snakes, turtles are not their favorite snack. The reason is quite simple. Snakes have no teeth. Even venomous species can't chew what they're about to eat, so they have to swallow the prey whole. And yes, their mouths can stretch wide enough to fit animals three times the size of their heads. However, snakes have digestive issues. Turtle shells are not only big, but also have sharp edges. So when the snake tries to swallow the turtle, it risks damaging the internal organs. Turns out you have dinner with the likelihood of internal bleeding. Not the best item on the menu, so no wonder snakes rarely choose turtles. But it's not just snakes that have problems with shells. Actually, I'm starting to think this is something like mithril chainmail, only from the animal world. A great white shark, the very monster everybody fears, tried to eat a sea turtle and choked to death. The chances of great white shark choking are actually very small. But the fact remains, first the fisherman noticed a predator with a turtle in its mouth, and the next day, a dead shark. Do I need to explain why sharks barely eat turtles at all? Steve choked on a turtle. No wonder. He shouldn't have skipped history lessons in fifth grade. What? Wait, how did the turtles get such amazing armor in the first place? When did it happen? Well, research published in the journal Current Biology on May 30th, 2013 suggests turtle shells may have started to evolve 260 million years ago. Damn long ago, you might probably think. Damn on time, I'll say to that. About 252 million years ago, our planet experienced a massive Permian extinction event, the largest one in history. 81% of marine species and 70% of terrestrial vertebrates disappeared. But the ancestors of turtles survived. True, this timeline is rather approximate, different scientists have different opinions on the matter, but if we trust the research I mentioned, it turns out the turtles got their shells just a few million years before the mass extinction. Maybe that was the reason they persevered. But this is just my guess. In any case, the shell is an ancient form of defense that has helped turtles throughout their evolutionary history, at the same time preventing the predators from eating them. Thanks to a piece of fossilized poop of an ancient shark, scientists found out the last meal of a predator that lived 70 million years ago was the ancient turtle. 
Basically, a baby shark ate a baby turtle and couldn't handle it. The prey was too large, even the vertebrae were not completely digested, and as a result, the shark died. Here you go. Chapter 3, Section 5. Sharks have always had issues with turtles. And not only sharks. Sometimes people come across fish that can't digest even very small turtles. Maybe, of course, they simply don't have enough time. But the fact remains, you can easily pull a living turtle out of the fish. This trick would hardly work with any other animal. Hold on. I keep talking about how strong a turtle's shell is. How difficult is it to bite through it or crush it? But we need numbers. So the shell of the tortoises is harder than that of the turtles. They have evolved stronger armor because they can't flee to the water when they're in danger. The shells of tortoises are thought to be capable of withstanding up to 200 times their weight. In short, even a thousand pounds of pressure may not be sufficient to shatter a tortoise shell. Even alligators and crocodiles can't always handle the shell. Keep in mind that the Nile crocodile has the strongest jaws on the planet. The rest of the croc species also know a thing or two about biting. But knowing all this, there's a reasonable question. If the shells are so cool and ensure such reliable protection, why won't everyone just grow them? Seems like this would save the animals from predators and mass extinctions. It's not as simple as it looks. The shell of a turtle is not like the shell of a crab or a snail. Turtle can't just get out of it because the shell is part of its body. It's formed by the ribs fused with the vertebrae, modified in a special way. According to paleontologist Tyler Lyson, this may be the main reason why no one else can develop such a shell. The ribs of mammals and lizards are used to ventilate the lungs. If you put your ribs in a protective shell, then you'll have to find a new way to breathe, which takes much more effort than fleeing from predators. Breathing issues are not the only problem. While the shells are very durable, that doesn't mean turtles don't feel when someone touches them. That is, even if the predator can't bite through the shell, the animal inside still feels it thanks to the nerve endings. It might not be as painful as a crocodile biting someone's hand, but still, it's hardly a nice feeling. Don't forget about the issues with maneuverability and flexibility. Most evolutionary anthropologists believe that turtles of the past, which did not have hard shells yet, were much faster than modern ones. Their logic's pretty simple. The shell's great for defending against predators, but it limits the range of motion, which is why turtles can't develop high speed on land. Also, the shell increases the weight turtles must carry around. While even modern leatherback sea turtles prove that tough shells have many downsides, the animals can dive more than 0.6 miles deep, all thanks to the relatively soft shell, which is not connected to the skeleton, flexibility, and other evolutionary adaptations. Other turtles can't dive that deep without risking their health. Though you know what? All these pros and cons of having a shell? That's nonsense. Turtles urinate via mouth. I just had to get it off my chest. Of course, not all species do this. Strictly speaking, only Chinese softshell turtles do it. They stick their heads in water and rinse their mouths to remove urea, the main ingredient of animal urine. That is, they essentially spit it out. Arch your neck. Can you see the range on that thing? Only 6% of the urea is released by these turtles in the traditional way. The rest is excreted through the bloodstream. This is how they stay hydrated. I need to use the restroom. I can't hold it. I can't. Ah! 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 The turtles are really weird. But at the same time, everyone knows about them. And it's difficult to imagine a world without turtles. Hmm. What if it really happens? Let's say predators learned how to bite through shells and ate all the turtles on the planet. Well, we'll have a very smelly planet. Turtles are great scavengers who enjoy eating dead fish. And if you know what rotten fish smells like, you can imagine the smell the turtles are saving us from. Without turtles, it'll be difficult to approach many bodies of water. Of course, there are other scavengers, but we actually risk getting a world which smells disgusting. Hold on a second. History knows many cases when our planet smelled just awful. For example, researchers claim the ancient Romans lived in smelly cities. Imagine a market offering fish and meat on a hot summer day. Refrigerators have not yet been invented. Food deteriorates quickly. Don't forget about smoke coming from bloody sacrifices and the fact that there's no sewage system. Yes, at this time, Cloaca Maxima, a part of the sewage system, was already there. But research shows that it mainly served to drain water pooled on the streets or filled the lowlands after river floods. That's it. It didn't remove, let's say, human waste. Even later, our cities didn't always smell better. Of course, most of the periods of bad smell were caused by rapid urbanization and poverty. But not only that. Oh, well, the stench from Venetian canals still causes problems. Hey, turtles, what's up with that? You gonna do something about that?